हेलो फ्रेंड्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस ए वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक फाइव पिलर्स ऑफ रोड सेफ्टी एज यू ऑल नो रोड सेफ्टी इज ए ग्लोबल प्रॉब्लम एंड अप्रॉक्सीमेटली वन पॉइंट थ्री फाइव मिलियन पीपल डाई ईच ईयर एज रिजल्ट ऑफ रोड ट्रैफिक क्रैश इन द वर्ल्ड एंड फोर फिफ्टी थाउजेंड एक्सीडेंट्स टेक प्लेस इन इंडिया एनुअली किलिंग ऑलमोस्ट वन फिफ्टी थाउजेंड पीपल एंड इंडिया हैज द हाइस्ट नंबर ऑफ कैजुअलिटीज इन रोड क्रैश इन द वर्ल्ड There are 53 road accidents in the country every hour, and one death every four minutes. And road traffic crashes cost most countries 3% of their gross domestic product, that is GDP. According to WHO, road traffic injuries are the eighth leading cause of death in the world, and it is the first cause of death among children. Aged 5 to 14, and among young adults aged 15 to 29, 54% of of death are of pedestrians, bicyclists, and motorcyclists. Low-income countries have about 1% of the world's vehicles, but they bear the brunt of 13% of all death. and high income countries which have 40% of the world vehicles they have a share of 7% of all death every 24 seconds someone dies on the road somewhere in the world and according to ncrb data of 2019 out of total accidental death in the country 43% are because of traffic accidents recognizing road crashes as a global problem the government of india adopted the brasilia declaration on road safety and the goal was to reduce the fatalities to half by 2020 and that was a part of un sustainable development goal adopted in september 2015 as a follow up several measures were taken by the ministry of road transport and highways but the crash trend has not come down as you can see in this table number of deaths in 2019 have increased and in comparison to the total number of death in 2015 globally also there was not much progress in achieving the target of 50% and therefore un declared the decade from 2011 to 2020 as the decade of action with five pillars of road safety and these five pillars were road safety management build safer roads build safer vehicles safer user behavior and improve post crash care and because no country in the world reached the target of 50% reduction in road crash fatalities you and declared a global plan and fixed a new target of reaching road crash death to half by 2030 emphasis here is on the safe system approach and this is the global plan decade of action for road safety 2130 and the target is to reduce road traffic death and injuries by at least 50% during this period of 10 years and this safe system approach consisted of five pillars the first is multimodal transport and land use planning the second safe road infrastructure safe vehicles safe road use and post crash response now these five pillars are more or less same as old pillars which were declared during the decade of 2011 to 2020 with some difference now the safe system approach recognizes that the human body is vulnerable and it needs protecting and the focus is on protecting people so that if they are involved in a crash they will not be killed or seriously injured no matter how they travel walk drive ride or cycle it does so through a holistic view of the road system that first anticipates human mistakes and second keeps impact energy on the human body at tolerable levels The safe system approach marks a shift from a sole focus on crash reduction to the elimination of death and serious injuries. 
the guiding principles for safe system approach are many and creating a safe system depends heavily on understanding and implementing these guidelines these guiding principles the first the limits of human performance we all make mistakes and we all need to acknowledge the limits of our capabilities the second the physical limits of human tolerance to violent forces we are physically vulnerable when involved in a traffic crash shared responsibility this means all of us take an individual and shared role in road safety a forgiving road system so that when crashes do happen deaths can be avoided and injuries minimized and increased use of public transport system the safe system approach also recognizes that humans vehicles and road infrastructure must interact in a way that ensures a high level of safety now there should be vehicle to pedestrian interaction vehicle to infrastructure interaction vehicle to vehicle interaction and vehicle to sensors vehicle to mobile network and to gps system so when all these units will interact with each other that will be the safest system and that is the limit of iot and intelligent transport system the first pillar of the safe system approach is multimodal transport and land use planning now it is estimated that 70% of global population will live in urban settlements by 2030 and that will increase the demand for public transport and it is expected that demand for public transport will exceed the capacity of the systems that rely largely on private vehicles such as cars and motorcycles and therefore the government should invest in public transport system to facilitate safe and efficient movement of large and growing population and that is the central to addressing this issue multimodal transport and land use planning is an important starting point for implementation of a safe system approach and this should be adapted to local context and climates the healthiest and cleanest modes of transport must be considered in multimodal transport and that include walking cycling and public transport the availability of parking for bicycles and private vehicles at bus stops and train stations for example can facilitate multimodal commutes and five actions are recommended to achieve this goals of this pillar 1 the first is implement policies that promote compact urban design the compact city approach is a high density urban settlement when all needs of the living habitation are provided at one place people living in a compact city are not required to go far for their daily requirements it has several advantages including travel through walk bicycle and public transport land use planning and design of its infrastructure should be such that it promotes and protects the needs of pedestrian cyclist and public transport users three discourage the use of private vehicles in high density urban areas by putting restrictions on motor vehicle users vehicles and road infrastructure and provide alternatives that are accessible safe and easy to use such as walking cycling buses and trams fourth provide internet intermodal connectivity between transit and bike share at major transit stops and create transport connections for bicycle and pedestrian travel that reduce total travel time and it can be achieved by two methods bike and ride trip chains where where the commuter will by will use bicycle from origin to train station leave the bicycle here and then ride in the train or in the bus and then when it goes goes to the train station then it will again use bike and to reach to the destination or it can be bike on board trip chains like when he, when the commuter takes bicycle from origin to reach to train station and then he takes the bicycle in the train or the public transport system and then use the same bicycle from train station to reach to the destination the fifth is that construct or reconstruct existing transport networks to ensure that 
non motorized modes of travel are as safe as motorized one and most importantly serve the travel needs of all ages and abilities and in 2014 the municipal government of chennai adopted a non motorized transport policy to prioritize walking and cycling and discourage the use of personal motor vehicles the second pillar of the safe system approach is safe road infrastructure now safe road infrastructure is essential to reduce road trauma road infrastructure must be planned designed built and operated to enable multimodal mobility including shared or public transport and walking and cycling it must eliminate or minimize risk for all road, road users not just drivers starting with the most vulnerable and it requires to develop functional classification and desired safety performance standards for each road user group at the geographic land use and road corridor level review and update legislation and local design standards that consider road function and the needs of all road users for specific zones and this is what irc has been doing for a long time and three specify a technical standard and star rating target for all designs linked to each road user and desired safety performance standard at that location fourth implement infrastructure treatments that ensure logical and intuitive compliance with the desired speed environment and speed recommended is 30 km per hour in urban centers less than or equal to 80 km per hour for undivided rural roads and 100 km per hour for express ways fifth undertake road safety audits on all sections of new roads and complete assessments using independent and accredited experts to ensure a minimum standard of 3 stars or better for all road users now this star ratings are based on road inspection data and it provide a simple and objective measures of the level of safety which is built into the road for vehicle occupants motorcyclists bicyclists and pedestrians five star roads are the safest while one star roads are the least safe broadly speaking every extra star rating results in reducing the crash cost to half in terms of number of people who are killed and seriously injured and there are several systems of star rating of roads now available and sixth is undertake crash risk mapping and proactive safety assessments and inspection of the target network with a focus on relevant road user needs as appropriate now crash risk maps are detailed crash data to capture the combined risk arising from in interaction of road users vehicles and the road environment risk maps provide an indication of overall road system performance and finally set a performance target for each road user based on the inspection results with clear measurable metrics at the road attribute level for example sidewalk provision the third pillar of road safety is safer vehicles vehicles should be designed to ensure the safety of those inside and those outside the vehicles there is a need to apply harmonized legislative standards for vehicle design and technology to ensure a uniform and acceptable level of safety worldwide and recommended actions to ensure vehicle safety are as below the one high quality harmonized safety standards for new and used motor vehicles safety belts child restraint systems and motorcycle helmets now standards on front and side impact to ensure that occupants are protected in a front and side impact crash must be framed by the country and child restraint anchor points to secure the child restraint system attached directly to the frame of the vehicle to prevent misuse electronic stability control to prevent skidding and loss of control in case of over steering or under steering and and anti lock braking system and daytime running lights for motorcycles now this abs prevents the wheels from locking 
when you apply the brakes. More, moreover, it also reduces the braking distance and gives better control of the vehicle while brakes remain applied. Motorcycle helmet should be certified according to international harmonized standards. Intelligent speed assistance system to help drivers keep to speed limits. An accident free emergency call system to trigger an emergency response by an in vehicle sensor. And number two is to ensure that high quality harmonized safety standards are kept throughout the full life cycle of the vehicle. And this can be done through mandatory certification and registration system for new and used vehicles based on established safety requirements and combined with routine inspections. Regulations for export and import of, import of used vehicles and also by building demand for safer vehicles by encouraging independent new car assessment programs. The fourth pillar of road safety is safer road use. Speeding, drink driving, driver fatigue, distracted driving and non-use of safety belts, child restraints and helmets are among the key behavior factors contributing to road injury and death. And therefore, roles of legislation, enforcement and education are extremely important. Level of awareness of different road users of crash risk through public awareness campaigns and education program must be done. Registration for road safety must be enacted by each country. For example, seat belt, speed, drink and driving, drunk driving, mobile phone use while driving and fatigue. And traffic police enforcement for road rules and regulations. Now here also some actions are recommended to achieve safer road use. And the first is enact and enforce road safety legislation. It means each government should set maximum speed limits considering the type of and function of roads, establish blood alcohol concentration limits to prevent impaired driving, mandate the use of protective and equipment like safety belt and helmets, restrict the use of handheld electronic devices while driving like mobile and establish a dedicated enforcement agency to provide training and ensure and to ensure adequate equipment for enforcement activities. Now these are the factors who are considered responsible for majority of road crashes and therefore there is a need to in not only to enact but also to enforce the road safety legislation system in every country. Number two, establish traffic rules and licensing requirements. And that can be achieved by providing information and education on traffic rules, by setting minimum age and vision requirements for drivers, by implementing competency-based testing for driver licensing and adoption of graduated driver licensing for novice drivers, and by setting limits for maximum driving time and minimum rest periods for professional drivers like taxi driver or truck drivers. Number three is to ensure road infrastructure takes account of the needs of road road users and is designed to facilitate safe behavior. That means road signs and road markings must be very clear. Use of roundabouts and traffic calming designs such as speed humps should be encouraged and physical separation of road users including use of protected bicycle lanes and pedestrian only zones must be provided. And fourth action is make use of vehicle safety features and technologies to support safe behavior. Means automatic safety belts and seat belt alerts must be installed in each vehicle. Intelligent speed assistance must be available. And technologies to disable texting and or other forms of distraction while driving must be provided in each and every vehicle. The fifth pillar of road safety is post crash response and post crash care and survival is extremely time sensitive. Delays of minutes can make the difference between the life and death and for this reason appropriate integrated and coordinated care should be provided as soon as possible after a crash has occurred. 
the aim of post crash care is to avoid preventable disability limit the severity of the injury and the suffering caused by it and ensure the crash survivors best possible recovery and reintegration into society now golden hour the golden hour after a car crash is illustrated by this figure on right side here it is the time within which medical or surgical intervention by a specialized trauma team has the greatest chance of saving life if more than 60 minutes have elapsed by the time the patient reaches the operation table the chances of survival fall sharply now as shown here the typical arrival of medical help take about 15 minutes transportation of the injured to hospital only takes about 50 minutes and and this time is critical for survival of the patient often hurdles get in the way of doctors and paramedics dramatically showing slowing down the time it takes to get to a patient and therefore any technology capable of improving the golden hour will help save the life the recommended actions to improve the post crash response number 1 provide a system to activate post crash response and for that a unique emergency telephone number with a national coverage must be provided in each country for example in india this number is 1033 and there should be a coordination mechanism for dispatching response like fire brigade police or ambulance number 2 build response capacity among lay responders even with non medical professionals and it is important to provide basic training for lay providers such as taxi and public transport providers police fire brigade etc so that immediate help can be given to the crash victim enact good samaritan law to ensure protection for lay responders 3 strengthen professional medical care and that is done by establishing trauma registers in healthcare facilities to gather information on the cause of injuries and clinical interventions build capacity of pre hospital hospital and rehabilitation care or services and establish a basic package of emergency care service for each level of the health system ensure 24 hour access regardless of ability to pay to operative and critical care services that are staffed and equipped provide recovery and rehabilitation services to prevent permanent disability fourth establish multidisciplinary post crash investigation labs in the country and five provide social just judicial and where appropriate financial support to bereaved families and survivors must be an and cashless treatment scheme for road accident victims must be provided so these are five pillars of road safety as adopted by global plan of un and finally i would say that ensuring effective implementation of the safe system is essential to realizing road safety improvements in this decade action should be based on evidence and where possible implementation research should be used to guide local adaptation of proven measures road safety is underfunded in most countries long term sustainable investment is required for development of safe road infrastructure as well as for interventions that can improve road safety so friends thanks for watching you can write your feedback in the comment box thank you very much